you need to bolster your cash savings, what that does is prepare you for the next emergency so that you don't have to go into debt and borrow to get out of that emergency. If you need to pay down some of your debt, that puts you that much closer to being debt free so that you're not paying high interest rates and you're not dependent rather than independent. And if you've done those two things and you're rolling pretty good, the next thing we would say to do with your refund or any windfall lump sum that you get is put it toward retirement. And that really speaks back to what we do every day here at Genwell. If a team builds retirement income plans, we need to target your uh, desired retirement date, your desired uh, uh, amount of income, and see are we on track, are we putting enough money back into savings, contributing to our retirement accounts to get us likely to the asset level we need to produce that income. So it all goes back to the plan, but at least consider putting some of that refund towards retirement. As of April 1, the average tax refund was $3,226. That could, you know, that doesn't sound like much, but if you're 20 years, 25 years away from financial independence or planned financial independence, that could go a long way with compound interest. It, it can. And I know there are a lot of people out there today that, that look at retirement and go, you know, I don't want to be 65 or 70 before I really begin to enjoy myself. Well, one of the things you've got to do in that case is put some money away for your eventual retirement, but put it in, in non-retirement accounts. If you want to retire before 55 or 59 and a half, depending on where your money is going to come from, Tim, you've got to have some non-qualified outside your retirement account money to bridge you to that era where you can get to your qualified money. So if you're really putting a lot of money into your 401k or maxing that out and and you may have that opportunity to retire early, we do need some place to go to fill that gap before age 59 and a half when you have access to those um, pre-qualified um, funds that you can actually then go and have investments built for the timeline that we have and make sure that we're building that up so that you have access to it. Let's, let's put some numbers on that. And let's say you wanted to retire at age 50, and maybe you got a lot of money in your 401k plan at work that you can get to at age 55, mm -hmm. and maybe you've got some other money at, in IRAs that you can get to at 59 and a half. But what about that gap between 50 and 55? How are you going to live on that? Well, that becomes way problematical when you start trying to think about ways that you can get that qualified money out early. There's probably one way to do it, and it's really not a, a real advantageous way for most people. So, uh, Scott, I believe you've got to think about investments that are just in your name or your joint name with your, uh, your spouse that you're making for retirement, and it's earmarked for retirement, but you have the ability to get to that money prior to your eventual retirement age at 55 or 59 and a half. Want more content like this delivered to your inbox weekly? Visit fastest4.com to learn more.